Hi guys, today I'm making a guide on the questline in the Shara that awards the Faded Wizard Hat toy. This questline also leads to the Trial of Fire, Frost and Shadow quest, but you can do those without going through the whole questline. So if you're here just for those, I am going to put an annotation on the screen right now, so you can skip to that part of the video. Just a quick note, this is a Horde only questline. Okay, with that said, let's get started. Firstly, we come here to the middle of the Bilgewater Harbour, where you speak with an NPC named Timo. Gee, I wonder what that's a reference to. Who gives you the first quest named Ashara Blues that starts the whole questline. He sends you to speak with an NPC named Kalik, who's a bit further down the village below this bridge. He in turn gives you a quest by the name of Friends Come in All Colors, in which you have to speak with a murloc named Ergl, I suppose, who is located on a coast northeast of the village. He also gives you a 5 minute water walking buff in case you don't have a mount, because this is a zone for the levels 10 to 20. And with that said, if you don't have a flying mount, I would not suggest doing this quest because the trials are very buggy, as you'll later see, and they're a lot easier with the flying mount. You return the quest to the Moloch, who gives you 3 new quests you have to do in the area around them. The first two quests are pretty straightforward, you have to kill 10 crabs and collect 10 beans, which are scattered around the coastline. The third quest I found really funny because you walk around these water elementals and you kind of suck them in. Odd, but somewhat amusing actually. After you're done with that, you get the follow-up quest in which you have to use an item from your inventory to spawn and kill a waterlord on a nearby peninsula near the Tower of Eldara. You also need to loot a quest item from him. You return the three quests and the Merlot gives you a new quest named Washout. He also mounts you on a turtle, but again that's for the people who don't have the luxury of a mount, so it doesn't have any significance to the quest. You then go to the Northern Rocket to exchange where you speak with the Bloody of Surata Fire Spinner, who gives you a quest to speak with the image of Archmage Xlem. To see said Archmage, you need to equip the Dingy Wizard Hat which is in your inventory. Afterwards, you don't need to come here on the top of the Arcane Pinnacle, where there also is an image of Archmage Xlem, but rather here, a bit northeast of the Northern Rocket to exchange. Here you will receive three quests to help Xilem and his apprentices. For the first quest you have to kill the nearby hippogriffs and collect their feathers. The second quest involves collecting eight living iron times that are scattered around the trees in the same area. And for the third quest you need to use the item arcane charge in your inventory and place it in front of the path of a rocky balboa. Once he steps on it, it will detonate and you have to collect five animate basalt around the area of the detonation. You, me or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now if you know what you're worth... After you're done with that, you return the three quests and you receive two new ones who involve a bunch of Satas who are located eastwards of the camp. For the first quest you have to open these stolen manuals until you receive the item of Juror's Manual. For the second quest you have to use your arcane assistance to turn the Satas into cockroaches and then kill them. Do keep in mind that this, for some reason, doesn't work while you're mounted. After you're done with that, you can use your arcane assistance teleport to camp ability to return there faster instead of walking. You then return the quest and accept the new one, which turns you into a bolt of unleashed magic and transports you to the bottom of the arcane pinnacle. The next quest involves getting on top of the arcane pinnacle. To do that, you need to step on these circles which boost you to the next platform and at the same time activating these pillars. I also found that there's no consequence to falling down if you have a flying mount, as you can just fly up and get to the next platform. After you reach the summit and return the quests, you finally get the trial quest, and this is where the challenge begins. To reach them, you must first click on one of these three stones who correspond to each of the three trials, and then click on the portal. The trial of fire is extremely straightforward. You need to sit in the circles where there is no fire, and you need to do that 10 times in a row without taking damage. The easiest way to do it is to just follow around the dancing elf guy as he seems to know what he's doing. I myself got the achievement a bit earlier because I tried doing the challenge a couple of times beforehand. The trial of frost I found extremely difficult. The basic premise is that you have these three orbs in the middle that shoot ice around them, you have these randomly spawning circles on the ground that push you in the air and deal damage to you, and you have these orbs of which you need to collect 15 to get the achievement. 
The reason this is so difficult is because these ice shooting orbs cover the whole area of the island you're on and they're also a bit faster than you so you cannot outrun them. I admit I pussied out and I used the flying mount to get this achievement, but the way I've heard most people do it legitimately is by just waiting on the edges patiently and searching for an opportunity to get an essence of frost. I really wouldn't suggest that way because it's really frustrating as the orbs sometimes bug out and do not collect instantly once you hit them, and in general it's slow and unreliable. The trial of shadow is by far the most annoying and buggy one. The rules are that once you hit the pillar in the middle, ghosts start spawning randomly from the portals and start chasing you. Your goal is to load 20 of them into the shadow runes on the ground without getting damaged. When you're higher level you evade these ghosts attacks, which means they do not reset your counter on the right, nor do they reset your quest progression, but for whatever reason they do reset your achievement progression, which is the really annoying part. Not to mention the plethora of times I've had a ghost run over a rune and had nothing happen in result. The way I did it is I realized that after you click the pillar, you have a couple of seconds where you're not in combat in which you can mount. The problem is that you can't complete the challenge this way because once you're in the air, the ghosts just despawn. So you go to the ground with your mount and you lure them in like you would normally do if you don't have a mount. But once you feel danger, you just fly upwards. Just be careful flying your mount near the portals as they instantly swing once they spawn. This challenge took me 15 minutes to complete and it was in general a really frustrating experience. But the questline does not end here. Once you return all the trial quests, you get out of the portal and Kiss 11 gives you a new one. This involves coming here and speaking to one of his apprentices, Joanna. She gives you a quest in which you have to enter the portal behind her. This teleports you in the air where you fall and die and you meet the spirit of Azuragos and his beloved Anara. You speak with him and you have a dialogue. I would actually not recommend skipping the dialogue because it's surprisingly well written. Once you're done, speak with Anara and she'll revive you for free. Afterwards, you come here and speak with Kalek again, who gives you a quest to kill the leaders of the Black Dragonflight. Keep in mind that if you kill the orc instantly, the dragon will bug out and he'll sit at 3.5 million HP and it will evade all your attacks. If you do this correctly, the dragon will catch you in his claws until Kalek goes comes and reduces his HP significantly and afterwards kills him. You return this quest which completes the storyline, but you still have a couple more quests if you want to get the toy. The first one you have to kill these guys, get their keys and rescue some prisoners. And the second one you just have to kill a bunch of drakes. You return these two quests and Kalagos gives you the final quest that there was the Faded Wizard Hat toy. This questline took me about an hour to complete in total. But excluding some of the trials, it was overall actually a really fun experience. The video itself took me a lot more to make and I would really appreciate if you guys subscribed if you liked it. And of course, this is how the toy looks like when you put it on. Thanks for watching.